have another uh, chapter on working capital management uh, we'll take that uh, slightly after this one because this is more lighter in nature and uh, probably more of a theoretical uh, reading compared to doing some kind of calculation so what we'll uh, do is we'll first try to uh, understand from uh, the corporate governance standpoint what is that uh, every company has to typically follow and uh, what is it the company is uh, 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 what are the various things which the company has to get into uh, from the shareholder satisfaction standpoint see because uh, what typically is happening is shareholders buy the shares of the company but they don't get involved with the day-to-day -day operations and management. It's like uh, you have invested in a business, but you are not taking care of the operations of the business because of the size of the uh, investment as a whole in the business. You are becoming a very minority partner in the business. And because of that, how do you know that your money, whatever you have put in, in buying the shares of the company is put to the right use within the company? And from that standpoint, the norms of corporate governance has come into picture. When we say corporate governance, the intention is primarily looking at what is that the company is doing for the benefit of the shareholders. What, what are the things that are there within the company which ensures that the shareholders are not getting deceived. The money of the shareholders is not used uh, in an improper manner or for fraudulent purposes. Whatever the investment that has uh, come in, whatever the capital that has come in from the shareholders, everything is put to the right use. That is what is being uh, uh, mentioned in a kind of a manual called Corporate Governance Manual. Every public listed company should maintain, maintain that as a part of its corporate governance practice so it should be there as a part of the annual report of the company or it can publish it separately saying this is our corporate governance uh, scenario what it is is primarily this is also the role of the finance department within a company come up with a corporate governance manual make sure that uh, all the activities of the company are in line with the corporate governance uh, practices itself because uh, at the end of the day shareholder is the person who has put in money into the business apart from promoter promoter is also one of the shareholders so shareholder is the guy who has put in money into the business whereas employee is the person who is uh, taking a salary for the services which he is offering or manager is a person who is taking a salary for whatever he has he is doing end objective of a manager in any company or of an employee in any company is to work in line with the shareholders make sure every task which they take up it increases the value of the shareholders it's not their own pet because they have nothing to do with the company if the if there is a loss it's a loss to the shareholder it's a loss to uh, it's a loss to the promoter but it may not be a loss to the manager or an employee because he has no financial stake. He's only a, he's, he's like a person who is taking a fixed income as a salary for the services which he is offering. Right? So, what is, uh, how does a company make sure that whatever it is doing, it is in the interest of the shareholders itself? So, that's where every company will come out with some set of controls, processes, procedures which are running the company and every company will have a set of people called board of directors these are the people who will whose main role is to ensure that the shareholders interests are fully protected so it will clearly define what are the roles responsibilities of the management the board of directors who whose major role is protecting the shareholders interest and what are the roles of the shareholders and primarily some of the key things which we need to understand in this process is 
the board of directors should be independent of the management probably you have to just look at uh, different companies corporate governance practices some companies we will see that majority of the board of directors are again the managers of the company ceo cfos these are the people who are again there in the board but for some companies there will be a large number of independent directors who don't uh, play any kind of management position in the company those are called as independent directors whereas uh, ceo cfo who are involved in the regular uh, day to day operations of the company they are not non independent kind of directors or executive kind of directors so non executive directors and executive directors so as an investor or as an analyst i need to see the mix of these two because if if management and uh, board both are one and the same management decisions will be same as board decisions so board is nowhere acting on behalf of the investor on behalf of the shareholder but the major intention should be board board is existing because it has to act on behalf of the shareholder because the shareholder cannot involve in day to day operations of the business board is treated as a representative of the shareholders board is not treated as a representative of the management at all so whenever the issue comes up the first people who are questioned are the board of directors only because they have to be a representative of shareholder and every task every major activity of the company will move forward only if the board of directors have given their approval and the board of directors have to give their approval only if they are fully confident that this activity of the management this project of the management will increase the shareholder value right so that's where uh, we have to ensure that uh, the board is more and more independent and uh, all the people in the company they are acting in an ethical manner and uh, all the financial reporting and everything see every every company publishes its annual report which contains so many things including the financial performance and uh, corporate governance activities uh, and the operations the plan for the next year lot of things go as a part of the annual report make sure that the annual report contains all these things and it is uh, published every year without failing make sure that uh, the make sure that whatever the company wants to convey to the shareholders that entire thing is conveyed and communicated so some of the practices because the majority of the shareholders are minorities right we, we very very little little stake so the corporate governance practices are primarily targeted towards them so majorly they should be focus on independence of the board so if you open uh, probably the annual report of infosys the annual report of some other company there will be a clear cut demarcation saying these are all independent directors these are executive directors there will be a clear cut mention which means these guys they are just on the board probably i may be a board of some company but i may not be involved with the operations of that company at all only the final decision and that too the decision the only perspective i will see is will it benefit the shareholders or will it not i am not saying is it a good decision or a bad decision as a board member my job is to evaluate whatever the decision the company is willing to take will it benefit the shareholder or will it not benefit the shareholder prime stuff right is it something a pet project of the management which may not give any benefit to the shareholder immediately then the board has to object that kind of move right probably in uh, the typical satyam uh, meta story we have seen the same thing the board has objected <coughs> the management buying out of metas and that is where the whole thing got broken out so bro board if it really senses that something wrong is going in the investors way they can very well object the move of the 
company and the management. So if there are more independent people, it becomes more and more objective. Otherwise, there is a lot of subjectivity, a lot of undue influence, all these things will come up. So if the company really wants to promote a kind of uh, image with the investors, it will make sure that there are a lot of independent directors on the board. And uh, so the major intention being the protection of shareholders' long-term interests. And some of the most desirable things are let the board not contain the CEO or the ex-CEO of the company. And also evaluate the regular meetings of the board without the management's presence. So board only meeting. So each and every details of the board meeting also are present as a part of the annual report. Who all are present? Right? So any board member just absent for so many meetings they are all kind of hindrances they are all probably uh, needs to be evaluated by the analyst so uh, regular meetings without the management because manage even if a ceo or cfo is there in the meeting probably it may do some kind of biasing so only the board meeting and shareholders see the major uh, thing that needs to be uh, looked at from this perspective is shareholders having a voice in the government Shareholder, if he is raising some issue or if he is giving some suggestions for improvement, because he is also a kind of a owner, right? So, the shareholder's voice in the governance and the operations process of the company. If there is an independent board, shareholder's voice is heard, okay? If he is giving a worthy suggestion or if he is giving a, uh, if he is raising a kind of an issue or a complaint, some kind of resolution of those things, the mechanism would be drawn for that and all these things will be operated because so many minority shareholders only will add up to a bigger value. Even if one of the guys are ignored like that, it will have a negative impact from the company's standpoint. And what is the experience and expertise of the board? Because it has to make sure that every decision it is providing its approval to that. So unless it has the required amount of knowledge, experience and expertise they cannot they cannot question the management so we have to be ensure that that much of experience and expertise is present so even the qualifications experience everything of the board is mentioned in the report even on the websites of the companies that entire details are present and uh, also evaluate if the board if the board is composed of customers and suppliers of the company. Again, a biased decision may come. If the board is present from a supplier, so all decisions will be favoring that supplier itself. So, make sure a lot of independence exists in this entire activity. And on what process the board members are hired? What is the interview process? How open is that interview process to get members onto the board? Is it just a nomination or is there a proper procedure, some committee which is getting into it, all these things have to be evaluated very carefully. And the better thing is the moment we read one company's annual report, we get this entire details uh, of, of that particular company. Some of the key things that needs to be focused both from an exam standpoint as well as usage, the frequency of board elections, the, the, the directors, are they get are their annual elections or are there staggered multiple year terms which means uh, probably uh, uh, is it like the whole board is there for a longer period or elections are held every year if the elections are held every year see if it is uh, like okay the same board member is continuing for last 10 years there is a good chance that the management and board member they can collude there could be some kind of secret agreements between the management and the board member but if the board member elections are happening every year and different people are getting uh, nominated or every year at least some portion of the members retire instead of all coming in at same time and all leaving at the same time if it is at least like okay one-fourth of the people retire at the end of every year. In that case, there is an advantage. Right? If one-fourth of the people retire at the end of every year, every year, 
you are getting fresh